A number of persons make a refuge for themselves out of the notion of fate. They say, everything is settled and determined and ordained. Therefore, if I am to be saved, I shall be saved. And if I am to be lost, I shall be lost. After all, we are creatures of circumstances and are like the fish of the sea taken in a net or sea birds caught in the wind, driven we scarce know whither. Let us hope that all may come right at last, but we cannot help it whatever may occur. I have no hesitation in saying that this refuge is a refuge of lies. It would not endure one of the tests, and assuredly not the last, for its tendency is to deny all moral obligation, and hence it is no friend to holiness. It deliberately charges God with the creature's sin, and makes out the sinner to be the injured person, and clear of the guilt of his own acts. Many persuade themselves that they believe it, but it is such a poor, paltry shelter that I wonder they are not ashamed to mention it in the bottom of their hearts. Those who urge it no better. Look you here, good sir, and see your own inconsistency. Why did you punish your boy this morning for willful disobedience? Why did you not say to him, I will not chide with you, my son, nor chasten you, though you provoke me, for you cannot help it. You are ordained to it. The thief that broke into your house the other day, did you lie still and let him take your plate? If he was ordained to have it, he would have it. Why did you open the window and cry for help? When the thief was taken, did you say to the magistrate, do not punish him, he could not help it. No doubt some divine decree led him thereto. The scoundrel that called you liar the other day and knocked you down in the street, did you rise up and with a quiet smile thank him for it, for he could not help it. He was only the agent of a divine purpose and the instrument of an omnipotent predestination which he could not resist. You never thought of such folly. You feel that those who injure you are responsible and you treat them accordingly. Now, Mark, you are responsible too. It is a truth that all things are fixed, but it is not a truth that therefore men may live in sin and lay the blame upon God. Whatever foreordination and predestination may be or may not be, they leave men free agents and responsible beings, or else both law and gospel are absurdities, and the Bible is ill-written. In other matters, men act not on the supposed inferences of fate, but on the evident necessities of everyday life. Why not in religion? It may be true that everything is fixed, doubtless so it is, but because it is fixed whether I shall live or not, do I therefore refuse to eat? Because it is fixed whether I shall sleep or not, do I refuse to undress and get into my bed? Because it is predestinated whether I shall be rich or not, do I leave my shop and get me away, and leave my goods to sell themselves? Nay, verily, predestination or no predestination, you are all eager to get gain. Men are not such idiots in other things as they pretend to be in the things of God. The plea of fate is a fool's refuge, worthy only of a brainless sot. Since it will not stand even my feeble brush, you may be sure that it will all dissolve beneath the iron rod of the Prince of Truth. It is in vain for you to say, We were delivered to work this iniquity, for ye know that ye sin willingly, and ye refuse Christ deliberately. Ye choose the evil, and turn your backs on the good, and therefore your ruin must be laid at your own doors. Cease then, from the vain endeavor to justify yourselves, and seek unto the Lord and his Christ.